Sig Talks, Episode 017. Is there room for God in chiropractic? Hello, and welcome to Sig Talks with your host, Dr. Carrie Sigafoos, your home for the chiropractic philosophy, where we discuss the teachings of Dr. James Sigafoos, from his writings to his talks and his many audio presentations. Hello, and welcome to another episode of SIG Talks. When I was cataloging all of my father's consultation calls, I actually got to listen to pretty much all of them. Every now and then, one would pop up that would catch my attention, and I put them aside for the future podcast. Uh, This week, I came across one that I'm entitling, Is There Room for God in Chiropractic? Uh, It might sound a lot more controversial than it is, But my father's message is wonderful. The reading from BJ's Green Book in it is wonderful. And I hope you enjoy this as much as I did and and get from it what you need to get from it uh, as as I did. So with that, here is Dr. James Sigafoos, and I'll see you on the other side. bring this up for what it's worth. Uh, y'all on here, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah? Okay. Well, it's an interesting phenomenon, man. I had a young man from uh, from Australia who uh, who said he didn't he didn't believe in God, so he didn't want to be on a system of family because we mentioned God. And he didn't he didn't like God, he said. So I asked him what it was he didn't like about God. He said the way the Catholic priests treat young boys. So I said, well, hey, that doesn't have anything to do with God. That's a man in a church who is, is, is a pervert, and that has nothing to do at all with God. And so, you know, he, he's so, so bent out of shape about his relationship with God, which he has none, and, and so therefore he wanted to, to uh, you know, get away, which is, which is okay. I don't have a problem with that. But then another interesting thing. Later we had a young lady who was, who was the same thing. She didn't like, she doesn't like the idea of a personal God. She feels like God is just nothing but a cloud of consciousness. And, uh, but at the same time, she's been complaining that she doesn't love herself. So my question was, how can you uh, not love yourself and then you say you love your children? You, you can't love someone else if you don't love yourself. You can't give something away if you don't have. If you don't own something, you can't give it away. You don't own love for yourself, therefore you can't love anybody else. And so she more or less agreed with that. And then she said she, she didn't really want to be a chiropractor. She just wanted to stay home. And uh, I said, well, that's a little difficult to to uh, to gain anything as far as abundance goes by staying home. She said, well, I don't like, don't just don't want to be a chiropractor. And uh, I don't want, the, I don't don't want to have anything. I'm not a, I don't like to, to say I, I don't, I'm not in love. And, uh, and she went on and on and on about that. Now here's, here's an interesting thing. I talk about God. BJ talked about God. God talked about God. And the fact is that if we understand this principle, that universal intelligence, which is everywhere, is, is a synonym for God. And this, this universal intelligence, uh, when it enters into a living entity, it becomes innate. But it's actually universal intelligence in the living entity. It just has a different name, and it's called innate. But they're the same thing. So then we would have to say then, if, if universal intelligence is, uh, has, is a synonym for God, then innate would be a synonym for God. And, and so therefore, God is within. Now, if I look at the scriptures, it says the kingdom of God is within. I would have to agree with that. And I also would have to agree with the fact that if we're looking for love, if we're looking for abundance, if we're looking for joy and peace and happiness and all these things, then there's no point in us looking outside because it is not there. It's only inside. So we have to go inside, enter into the kingdom, and, and, and realize that inside of me is abundance, and inside of me is success and happiness and joy and peace, as well as inside of you, as, as it is in all people. But we have to contact it, and then we have to let it out. It's not a matter of finding it outside and bringing it in. It's a matter of finding it on the inside and letting it out. 
and then it 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 blooms. It becomes a uh, the fruit of it. It, it. it shows up in the form of money, in the form of of uh, cars, in the form of houses, in the form of of joy and happiness, and all these things. So they they they, be, they materialize outside of ourselves. They don't materialize outside and then come in. Uh, the, those things that we see out there are have our our, our creation or materialization of things that were within someone, somewhere, some shape, and in your own environment. In fact, you have created that environment through what you think. And you either think uh, you thought something that was good, and you ended up with a good environment, or you thought something that was not so good, and you ended up with not so good of an environment. But let's, let me share something with you from, from uh, BJ, from the Book of Answers. And the title of the little, little talk is, uh, You Might Die Before. And it says that uh, many chiropractors are ready to totter in their graves before they realize that they missed the boat on Thursday, to awaken later than sooner to their grave responsibilities when they're ready to be laid in their graves. They should have grasped the idea, seen the vision, learned how to grasp an opportunity when it knocked them down, when they were ready to start, when they left school. Many of us have said, if I'd have known 20 years ago what I know now, how different things would be. Most certainly I've said that. And if I could begin to shape my life now where I leave off, what a different kind of life I would have lived. And if I could transplant what I know at the end of my life to my children at the beginning of theirs, what a different world this would be. So many regrets can be met by accepting bitter trials, troubles, and tribulations that have been met and conquered by others profiting them. And so D.D. Palmer, for instance, and it was, a, was a pioneer. He was born and raised part of his life as a lumberjack in the backwoods of Canada. He knew what it was to wake up in a snowbound log cabin and crack ice to wash his face. He went out into the virgin forest, chopped down huge trees, rubbed stumps, fought Indians, hewed timbers with an ADZ or an adze by hand only, fastened them together with hand uh, hammered square nails and wooden pegs and, and shot his food in the wild. He drove oxen teams over mud and gumbo, forwarded streams and and rivers and, and crude fireplaces uh, fed by logs where he roasted in, in the front and, and froze in the back. And his clothes were carded, spun, and woven by his mother from backs of sheep. His chiropractic was born of the same rugged kind of thinking. He laid a fundamental foundation for you and me in our futures. The other fellow, and he's talking about himself now, he's talking about BJ, the other fellow, did not have any snap either because there were other forests to conquer in the halls of legislature, legal fights to protect and preserve what our father gave us. We had a gigantic octopus with thousands of tentacles of endless length strangling us and the, 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 and the ignorance of people and their idolatry and worship of their love for the mother of medicine had to be revamped. And this crude idea had to be whittled down, sandpapered, rubbed, rubbed down, rubbed by hand only, polished and fashioned into usable living materials so it could be used by you and me and serve the world, that his labors would not be in vain. We're still fighting for existence, and there's still much to be done. In those early days, we were surrounded by disciples of sterling silver. They were sick. They took adjustments. They got well. They received our blessings and became apostles of a, a living chiropractor. They knew what chiropractic would do. They were fired with this new religion to have a better philosophy of how to live. And gradually, old timers are retiring or laying away their tools. Soon they'll all be gone. Then what? Well, you young whippersnappers of today came here in a soft bed of down, roll up your Rolls Royce, eat ambrosia served on silver platters in the Palmer School of Chiropractic cafeteria. Educational food is shoved down your throats like mana and birds shove worms into the throats of chicklings until you suffer with a constipation of thought and diarrhea words. You sit on easy chairs, get a diploma, tied with baby ribbon and a license, and you cheat on all of your exams that you can and squeal and cough. Today, you travel over concrete highways, pass over streams on steel bridges, have central heating plants automatically fed, TNT blows up the stumps, and some of you have little regard for the fundamental purposes of D.D. and B.J. Palmer. You want money regardless. Many of you never had an adjustment, and God knows you need one. You don't know the struggles of your forebears, and what's worse, you don't seem to care. 
Well, will you step up? Because we're here and now trying to lay the groundwork to do spade work presenting a simple formula which successfully works to build a business. The day the chiropractor opens an office, this is not a new idea to the other fellow. He's been preaching it for years. Bill Werner has been sounding this gospel for years. Many now get it delivered post-haste airmail, special delivery, prepaid at their door, free, gratis for nothing. How many will now see in this simple formula how to find themselves, succeed at once, rather than waste 15 years as Wisher did, or many months as the Italian did. So, the average chiropractor who entertains lecturing ideas, he, he thinks he can imitate speakers who he respects as public orators, and nobody should imitate anybody else. He, he should be himself, none others. Dare to be original, and without being smart, speak his own thoughts in his own language, endeavoring as he does to use simple terms truthfully told in his own style. He'll be criticized for poor grammar, wrong English, right words at wrong places, wrong words at right places. He'll be criticized for many things they think he does wrong, but if he listens to all complaints, he'll close shop, quit preaching, quit practicing. Remember our story about fresh eggs sold here. Albert Hubbard said, to avoid criticism, think nothing, say nothing, do nothing, be nothing. The other fellow has never, ever seen or heard a professional university grammar shark who ever thought, said, or printed anything that moved the world of people up one notch. They opened uh, time, picking pickyanish and, and infinitesimal flaws and speeches and writings of those who do things. The poet of the Sierras once was asked where his library was, and his answer was, libraries are for people who don't think. I write them. After all, it's called ignorant people who have innate knowledge, who say things, do things worthwhile. The other fellow has been criticized times of galore for his use of bad grammar. Words are the vehicles of thought, and they're supposed to be used to that end. Many people use language to conceal thought. The other fellow uses it to reveal thought. Did we say anything worthwhile? Did it contain an essence of issues, constructive? That is this, is this is the issue. So one grammar shark criticizes once. We ask him to take one paragraph, rewrite and reconstruct it in correct grammar. When he was through, we ask him what he now had to say. And it was the opposite of what we had. So we are willing to use poor grammar, with which no grammarians agree if we say something. So there you go. That's, that's our friend BJ talking. And if you listened, you'll realize that this was written uh, several decades ago, but it's the same situation today. Nothing has changed. Nothing. we still got problems. We still have uh, so many uh, people that criticize and we still don't know the history of our own country, then alone the history of chiropractic. We don't realize the, 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 the pain and the issues that our pioneers went through uh, to create that which you and I have today. And so uh, we, need to, we need to understand the history a, a bit better. Well, here we are again. Before we go any further, I would like to say that everything I'm about to say is what I'm getting from this talk. I know I've said that before, but I really feel the importance of letting you know this. We all get what we need to hear at the moment we need to hear it. I chose this consultation call because of the way it began, that being talking about God, universal intelligence, and innate. Those of you who knew my father knew that he used this term God in all of his talks when it came to universal intelligence and innate. I, on the other hand, struggled with this all my life. So my understanding of this clip is very different from what you might get out of it. I'm not a religious man at all, but my father was, and I respect him for that. I respect his opinion on the matter, but what about those of us that struggle to understand chiropractic without the use of God as a way of understanding innate and universal intelligence. I don't know if uh, all of you know of my struggle with alcohol. It was a terrible part of my life, and I tried for many years to cut my dependency with alcohol. It ate, away, it, it, it ate its way into ev every aspect of my life until I had no life at all. But when I hit my rock bottom and I was willing to admit that I was powerless over alcohol and that my life had become un un unmanageable, I started to change. 
When I finally admitted defeat and asked for help, I went into AA, and I used the 12 steps of AA to get sober. Now, I know you are asking, what does this have to do with the topic at hand? That being, is there room for God in chiropractic? And I am getting to that, but I asked for a little leeway to get to my point. You see, in AA, uh, step two says, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. I had a, a very hard time with this because, well, I do not believe in God. Please don't let that taint your opinion of me. I do believe in a higher power. In the rest of this audio clip, Dr. Sigafus reads from BJ's Green book, uh, the, the Book of Answers, and in particular, a part of the book called And You Might Die. In the reading, he uses the story to explain synonyms. Now, a synonym by definition is a word or phrase that means exactly or nearly the same as another word or phrase in the same language. For example, shut is a synonym of close. Well, to my father, God is a synonym to universal law and innate. This still did not help me with my understanding of a higher power, and I, 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 I certainly it certainly did, did not help me to understand that, that God had a place in chiropractic. So let's go back a bit to me dealing with uh, me getting sober and with me dealing with the second step of AA. Uh, that being, I came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore me to sanity. You see, just because I do not believe in God does not mean I do not believe in nature, that I do not believe in science, that I do not believe in the power of universal intelligence. I can see a tree. I can feel the wind. I can feel the warmth of the sun on my face. I cannot control these things. They all are, or they all occur, and they all happen, whether I believe in them or not. All of this, all of these things became my higher power. If all of this could happen without any help or guidance from me, then, then if I put my faith in them and I just believed that I could simply breathe in and breathe out, wake up and, and, and that life could go on without alcohol and that all of my struggles would eventually ease and go away, then if a tree can produce oxygen without any help from me, then the universe would ultimately allow me to have a day without a drink. You see, it is all a matter of semantics at this point. Some people, like my father, called it God. Whether, if you, whether you refer to your higher power as God, the Indian God Ganesh, Allah, the Great Spirit, Vishnu, Christ, Jehovah, El Shaddai, the universal, the universe, universal intelligence, the great artificer, the Hopi God Tawa, nature, or any other name by that which you call the great being, it doesn't matter. Each of us has a personal relationship with it, and no one should stand in judgment. I respect my father and his relationship with God. It was in his core, just as my own relationship with nature or science or universal intelligence is in my core. When I allowed myself to believe in a power greater than myself, I allowed myself to know that I could get better. Now, don't get me wrong, this all took years of hard work and I had to be honest with myself about all of my actions that got me to the awful place that I was. But I had faith. It was that faith in something greater than me that saved my life. And I'm happy to say that I have not touched a drink in almost four years. Now, back to is there room for God in chiropractic? If God is your higher power and you need to believe in God to understand chiropractic, then I would have to say yes, there is room for God in chiropractic. But I also have to say that if I choose not to believe in God, and I would prefer to believe in science and in nature and in the universe, that you should respect my beliefs as well. To be honest, I'm a bit jealous of the people that have faith in an, in an omnipotent being. I would love nothing more than to put my blind faith in a higher power that has a plan for everything in this universe. But I just can't do it. 
what I can do is believe that the sun will always rise in the east and set in the west, and that when it rains, the water falls down and not up, and that if a bone is sitting on a nerve and it is pinching off the information from the brain to the body, then that part of the body that is being affected will not work properly. And I have to believe that if I do not drink, that my life will be good and bad, but without the alcohol, my life will be better just like your life will be better without a subluxation. So, you see, God, in a universal intelligence, science, or nature, it all takes faith. Because the power that made the body does heal the body. And whether you believe that it is God doing it, or releasing a subluxation that allows impulses from the brain to reach the part of the body that is going that it is going to, hence allowing tissue cells to create healthy cells instead of sick cells that is doing it, it does not matter. What matters is that it works. And when something works, that being chiropractic, we all can agree on one thing. It does not matter how you explain it as long as you can understand it and that you make it your own because it is not your beliefs or your faith that makes chiropractic work. It is the big idea behind it all. <laughs> well, thank you so very much for listening today. I hope you got whatever it is you were supposed to get out of this episode. I know I did. If you would like to hear the rest of this consultation call, it and so many others are now available on sigafoos.com for immediate digital download. This consultation call is number 104, and what you heard today was only 12 minutes of a 40-minute call. We have also started a subscription service that will allow you to get one consultation call sent to you every week in its entirety without my commentaries. So with that, I'm going to let you go and ask you to take a moment to figure out what is your higher power and does it help you to understand chiropractic? <laughs> See you next week and thanks again for tuning in. Thank you for joining us today. If you're interested in more of Dr. Sigafoos's material, head on over for your daily dose of chiropractic philosophy to www.sigafoos.com and register for our free newsletter and to find today's audio clip of Dr. Sigafoos in its entirety. Remember to give, love, do, and serve.